going to try to do this by simply explaining how an economist okay, would think about the question of whether policy should prohibit drugs. Along the way, I'll try to bring in some perspectives from sort of philosophical libertarianism, considerations of freedom and liberty. I think of those as being very, very sympathetic, but I'm mainly just going to stick to uh, being what I, what I am, which is an economist, and talk about how an economist would analyze that question. Now, the basic starting point, the crucial thing I want to emphasize first, is that the question of whether policy should prohibit drugs okay, is really two separate questions. First, should policy do anything about drugs? Should it try to reduce the use of drugs in any way, shape, or form, whether that is via prohibition or whether that's via syntax or public media campaigns or any other policy? Why not just let the use of drugs be the free market amount of drug use? If you conclude that policy should try to reduce drug use, then there's a second question. What method of trying to reduce drug use is the method that achieves the best ratio of benefits for society to cost for society? Prohibition, perhaps, is certainly one possible approach, but it's not the only approach, and we need to think about how we should try to reduce drug use if we're going to try to do that. Now, I'm going to argue that there is not a very convincing case that we should be trying to reduce drug use at all, if that's right, then of course we shouldn't be using prohibition to drug, reduce drug use because we shouldn't be engaged in any such uh, effort in that direction. And second, I'm going to argue that even if you think policy should try to discourage the use of drugs, okay, prohibition has got to be the worst possible method for accomplishing that goal, even if, if you take that goal as being worthwhile. Why are drugs different? Okay. The basic economic answer is they're not. Okay. The basic economic answer, the rational consumer economic perspective, says people use drugs because they want to use drugs. They think that using drugs will give them some benefit, whether that benefit is recreational, whether it's medicinal, whether it's just to look cool and being like your friends or whatever. Okay? Economics starts, it doesn't finish, and we'll get to that, but it starts with the presumption that people are rational, they understand the risks that are out there, and that when they make choices, they make them voluntarily, and so we should take, we should accept consumer sovereignty, we should accept consumer choices, so people are consuming drugs because they want to, and so there needs to be some compelling reason to intervene, some compelling exception to that perspective, before we undertake any policy to reduce drug use. Of course, if you take a libertarian perspective, you're going to come to exactly the same conclusion. The rights-based libertarianism says people should be free to do what they want, okay, subject to a few caveats, but only a few. So our presumption should be, our starting point should be, that drugs should be legal, and the burden of proof should be on anyone who wants to restrict freedom, who wants to interfere with consumers' ability okay, to use whatever drugs they want. There are, of course, zillions of things that people might do irrationally. They might save too little. They might exercise too much. They might exercise too little. They might pursue religion excessively or not enough. The range of things that you could imagine government trying to improve individual choice with respect to is so vast that, of course, you would exhaust all government resources if we put government in the position of saying we're going to make decisions for people who aren't making good decisions for themselves. Leading from that point, the third point, of course, is once you put government in the position of saying, we're going to intervene with respect to certain choices, we don't trust individual decisions about drugs, it's a very small step to say, and we don't trust individual decisions about what to eat, how much to eat, whether to exercise, whether to force people to be religious or to prevent people to be religious. And of course, governments have engaged in all those sorts of policies okay, in different countries around the world through history. Okay? Finally, well, it's undoubtedly possible, indeed likely, that some people use drugs okay, irrationally in ways that are self-destructive. Huge fractions of people okay, appear not to. Huge fractions of people appear to use drugs in ways which appear to be neutral or indeed quite beneficial okay, for those people. And so if we do anything to try to discourage drug use, we may be discouraging those people who are using irrationally, or we may not be reaching those people, but we would simultaneously be preventing people who would get some benefit from drug use from getting that benefit. Okay? So paternalism is an understandable perspective. Okay? It's not one libertarians like. It's one that a lot of economists have sort of accepted as a possible framework. But when you look at the details, you realize that even in the simple economics perspective, Paternalism has the potential for huge cost. Okay? It can easily end up doing more harm than good okay, overall.